Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the live stream. If this is your first time here, my name is Israel. And on today's live stream, we're going to be breaking down different markets, different currency markets. And we're going to, and we're going to be helping you unpack how to trade the Forex markets for the rest of the week. So like I said, if this is your first time here, one of our live streams, one of our videos, my name is Israel. And on this channel, we focus on helping you make money trading the Forex markets. And what we're basically going to do today is we're basically going to look at a couple of different currencies and we're basically going to unpack what you should be doing, what you should have been doing from the start of the week. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a moment and what you can do going forward for the rest of the week. So the fact of the matter is, if this is one of the first times you're here, if you don't know what we do, what we basically do here is on the weekend, we generally will open up our charts when the markets are opened and we will basically start breaking down different charts and the fact of the matter is as we basically do that we will basically be planning ahead for when the market opens how we are basically going to attack the market so this weekend was no different we've got a link in the description box to the weekend live stream for you to watch after this live stream if you want to go back and get some more context in that video in that live stream we will basically breaking down just all the different parts of different currencies how we ex expect to trade the forex markets we were looking at the economic calendar and all these different kind of things in order to prepare you we do that for one main reason that is basically to do things without the emotion to do things logically so when the market is actually closed there's not the up and down activity of the market the volatility dissuading us one way or the other okay now if you've got any forex questions any trading questions Within the hour that we're going to be going live today, I want you to basically put them in the chat box in the live chat to the left or to the right, actually. And I'll hopefully have time to answer those questions before we wrap up today. OK, if you want me to look at a particular currency, for example, you want me to give you my thoughts and my views while I'm here on the live stream, basically taking questions. I'll basically try and get to those as well. All right. So again, we're going to be ref we are going to be referencing back to the weekend live stream and previous live streams multiple times why because what you'll find with trading is and what you'll find with the way i kind of teach trading is all of these things have to line up so you'll reference me saying you know what i thought this was going to do this on the weekend now we're a couple of days into the market being open this is what the market's doing etc 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 okay so let's look at the currency to start let's look at the aussie dollar should be able to see my chart properly everything should be clear for you just give me two seconds just to make sure everything's working fine. Yep, everything seems to be working fine. Okay, cool. All right. So let me do this quickly. All right. Cool. All right. So 
we're going to start by looking at the Aussie dollar to start with. This is the Aussie against the Australian dollar against the US dollar. Right now, you can see the four hour view. We're going to basically be looking at different time frames, which is something we customarily are known for. We don't just take one currency, for example, and look at one time frame, the daily, or look at the tick chart, or look at the 15 minute chart or the five minute chart. We like to combine multiple things together. We've done a video on our channel as well about. What are the best time frames to trade? How to basically use those together? It's in the description box. You can watch that after today's live stream as well. It would be of good benefit to you. All right, so you can see here, this is the Aussie dollar. And on the weekend, a lot of these currencies, we had similar mindsets towards them. But it's actually interesting, as you can see, we look at a daily chart. All of this stuff, a lot of our analysis has been predicated on this huge drop down, right? And these two black lines on, for those of you who are new, one here, and obviously one down here, have been areas of previous key areas where price basically bounced from so it wasn't a surprise that price decided to do this and then subsequently done this now on the weekend we was talking about what's price actually doing right now what will price do as the, the market unfolds and the mindset i was basically saying is because the market has had this huge drop down right our mindset in regards to the Aussie dollar is we need to see what's going to happen because it does look like and it has looked at, like at different times the market is looking like it's ready to basically continue with this huge momentum that's been down for a few years. But the fact of the matter is, in these particular predicaments, price has continued to move up. That's one example, and obviously, this was the first example. Now, as we basically look at where price is currently right now, right, our mindset is the same. We have a question, and I was basically talking about this in the weekend stream, saying to myself, look, will this market continue to try and move up in this wave like manner right or is price going to say you know what now it's time for us to continue this downwards momentum that we can see here that we can see here and if we go to a higher time frame just for a moment we look at our weekly chart you can see let me zoom out for you as well going back for the last 10 years okay you can see that all these Aussie dollars have been moving down. Okay. But there's a lot of selling momentum. In 2010, price what seemed to look like it reached a peak and then gradually began to move down. And it's continued to move down to where we find ourselves here, bouncing off these key levels, which are synonymous with when you look at price action going back that way. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay, and we use the whole analogy of we use these higher time frames to give us a bird's eye view. Okay, it's like being in an elevator, going up to the top of a building, going up to the roof. The higher the time frame you go to, it's like the higher up in the building you're going at to so basically look down at the road and see which way the traffic's going. Okay, because if we can kind of ascertain which way on average that which way the traffic is actually moving, the long term momentum, it's easy to kind of pick point, pinpoint opportunities in these different currencies right but on the weekend my mindset was like look we can't ignore that price has been moving up so on a week to week basis on a day to day basis my mindset was okay cool let's continue going this way unless okay and this is what you need to be careful with and i stressed this on the weekend i stressed this previously as well if you're going to be trading in the opposite direction to long-term momentum okay not just talking about here right like just the last couple of weeks of activity we just looked at we looked at what we just highlighted here, which is two to three weeks of activity. We just looked at 10, 11 years worth of activity. Which one do you think is like more appealing? Generally, most of the time, it's going to be the overall data opposed to just the initial data. Unless you're dealing with something like something severe, which in a lot of ways, we are dealing with something like that today. Even in right now with people actually being black like bound to stay at home and all those different kind of things. But the point is, when you actually really think about it in the bigger scheme of things, okay, this scenario here, like, hasn't so far shown us anything too, um, like, unprecedented. If, for example, price was pushing down here and just blowing through these areas, like, without, like, respect or out regard for any of those areas, then it may be, there may be a point. But price is still, whether it's dropping down or moving up, it's still being quite obedient to a lot of the historical areas so just keep that in mind but i basically said look with long-term momentum if you're going to trade in the opposite direction you always want to be careful and say okay cool price can turn around at any moment and just continue 
in the direction that it was actually going okay so cautiously if you're going to be trading up just be careful at any moment the velocity that's driving this market down can come in and if it does it's going to start trying to go back to some of these lower levels here and trying to retest them right but this is the daily view we can now go down let's look at a one hour view and give you a better view of what's basically happened since the market opened okay so the market opened on the 19th which would be the evening which would be around around here right we do this and move this over a little bit okay so about here in the evening first day of the week in the evening the market opened and what has price done so price basically started Okay, into the morning trying to push up and spent most of the day yesterday pushing up but what's actually happened subsequently to that app actually happening well since that this what has come to be the top right price has now put in quite a bit of work so we're literally talking about going from 6380 all the way down to 6260 that's 100 and 20 pips right here right so price has started this descent now what you want to be good at doing is we highlight this already it doesn't we don't mind if we're going to be trading in this direction but we have to be cautious that the market will be ready to reverse and bring in the long-term momentum so what you'd always do if you're going to be looking at that you'd also you'd be looking left to say okay cool where has price basically turned around from it just so happens that what's happened so far is going back to last week last weekend the last day of the trading week that price kind of topped out in this region tried to get a bit higher um the 64 round number which is sort of a self-fulfilling 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 prophecy in the sense that when prices get to round numbers a lot of people feel that these levels are really strong and are good areas for price to reverse so because a lot of people understand that a lot of the time price would ad will adhere to those kind of things but price basically topped out like we said in this region now we may not know that this is going to happen the only thing we can do is like i said previously we can look to the left and ascertain and see okay cool where has price did these kind of things we'd be looking at these kind of areas if price breached higher than where price actually is but you can see this here now obviously as price has dropped down i said 120 pips right we also want to be looking left you'll see this more detail when we look in some other currencies just how significant this actually is right but price today has so far breached this level this level <coughs> which is actually quite interesting because if the market is actually going to start moving down with the long term momentum what do we be we have to we what do we have to be mindful of as we zoom out let's zoom out a little bit right we have to be mindful of all this stuff that's happening here because yes we've got the huge momentum like we just discovered from the last 10 years 9 10 years right but then at the same time we also need to start to see things happening in these lower time frames the 4 hours the 1 hours the 15 minutes to basically showcase that you know what we are all in alignment and we can see that the market is actually moving down so we'll look to these areas and we'll say okay cool as more of this stuff happens so the top might be for example this top here may be for example all that some people need some people are going to say okay cool we need to see this price area break which is what price basically did before before breaking back up right to where what price is actually doing now some people are going to be looking at this and saying okay cool now that this area has been breached we might be trading but also we have to now be cautious of this area down here where price kind of skyrocketed up from initially that's the 62 region you're talking about 100 pips 90 pips there thereabouts where price currently is right now basically and this is vital because as you look at this kind of stuff let's take all of this off and go down a little bit right well let's even just move over as you look at all of this stuff we say this all the time okay if the market is going in a specific direction if you're trying to trade something in a specific direction so for example where price is right now right if price is basically just putting in some profit taking go back to our previous live sessions if you um, want to know more details about that what i'm basically referencing that 
in regards when I say profit taking. But if price is basically profit taking right now and we're looking for where is the next top, that's going to provide us an opportunity to basically jump on a sell position with a stop loss above, okay, but also at the same time give us an opportunity to enter the market and have a target somewhere lower where the risk to reward makes sense. Okay. The risk to reward based on the entry, the risk to the potential reward we have can make sense, but also be within this region. The reason I'm saying this is because you always want to take a trade and have your target zone. This is how I kind of trade. Okay. And this is a, a great place to just segue and say, look, this is my personal opinion, not financial advice. You obviously have to make your own decisions. I obviously make my own decisions. Okay. But this is the point where you have to, I, what I try to do is I always want to make my targets within the previous key area where price may have reversed from previously or where price has basically extremely done the opposite action. So as you can see here, there was an extreme push up. So I would, if I'm taking a trade from somewhere in this region up here, would want my target to guaranteed be in within this region. So if the risk to reward, I go for at least three to one or one to three for those of you who want to just be um, technically accurate to how we measure risk to reward, right? risk to reward, right? I would want my risk to reward to be well within this window, this distance. So if I'm taking one trade, for example, or if I end up taking two trades, I'd always need those target zones to be within this region. Um, and then if price subsequently breaks this, then I'll be basically looking for the next area that may be down here and saying, okay, cool. As I continue to look for sell positions, if I get one trade on in here, my target can't be higher or lower than this. I can do it, but I don't like to do that. Basically, if I'm getting two trades on, maybe I get one trade on that goes to like here. Then I get another trade, maybe from up here later on, and the target can't be below this area. Okay, because we're always looking at previous action to see where price did the opposite and where it did it extremely um, somewhere lower or somewhere higher, depending on the way we're basically trading. Again, if this makes sense, if this doesn't make sense, if you've got questions like I need a bit more detail about to how to unpack this, let me know in the comment section. And again, like I said, before the hours up, we'll basically jump into this in a more in more detail. Okay. Let's go down lower and let's look at this stuff in a little bit more with a little bit more context. This is the area we was just highlighting a minute ago as this is the area where price kind of topped out from. And you can see so from Friday um, and then starting the week. Price decided to top out. Now, the reason we've gone into this because I want you to see this. So look, look how price was gradually moving down in a series of waves. The editions, they'll say that's the five, the five wave move, right? But price, it did go below this region, not much. Okay, not much before below 622.60. It didn't go much below it, but has now subsequently moved up. Now, this isn't a problem that price is doing this because you'd expect profit taking, especially off over big moves, okay, either down or up, because price doesn't go in the same direction forever. It will move sideways, it will move in the opposite direction. People are taking profits, all of those different kind of things. So what we'll be doing is, as price is moving down, for example, we'll be saying, okay, cool. Is this the potential top? This is how I look at the market. And I, if I'm looking for a trade, I've already got long-term momentum. I've already started the week saying, look, I don't mind going this way, which is what price has basically been doing for the last couple of weeks. But I'm ready for price to basically start going this way because that's what the long-term momentum is basically saying, right? This is an arrow to the big arrow, which is the long-term momentum. Let's do long-term, okay? Long-term momentum. Now, the fact of the matter is, if price is moving down, I'm saying, okay, cool, is this the top? And it's about patience, okay? We don't know where the top is, we're retail traders. We trade our own money, most likely, if you're watching this video. I trade my own money, okay? I'm not given insider information from people giving me trades and I'm taking trades for them in that regard. And I'm facilitating a huge amount of trades where I know what the market is going to do. That's why we do analysis. So we'll just highlight this. Is this the top? And we'll put a question mark. And we'll see what price does. If price comes back to this region and does something that I, that I like, I may say, okay, cool. If it provides an opportunity, I might take a trade from here, trade into lower levels. As I just kind of explained previously, 
thinking this way and looking at where a price could actually go to. Okay. And this is how you kind of treat it. Like I said, some of you are going to see this area broke, broke, broken and say, well, you know what? I want to see price break to a lower level before I start taking this opportunity. But this is how you basically do all of this stuff on the weekend, which is preparing us while the markets are closed, right? Unemotional. And we basically look at this scenario and say, okay, cool. All right. What's price actually doing here? This is how you can go down to an even lower time frame, a more common intraday time frame. This is the 15 minute, right? And we're basically saying, what does this look like? This is the same area. This is the same potential top we just talked about, right? Our price came here in the afternoon yesterday and then came back again in the evening. And at this point, for some of you, you'd be saying, well, look, we know the long term momentum is down, right? Israel talked about that on the weekend, or you did your analysis yourself. To end the week, price topped out in this particular region, okay? And then to, to start this week, we saw price top out in this particular region, price came back up into this region and topped out again. And when we put all of these things together, there's a lot of sideways action. That's a, an hour or two, a couple of hours of price being in this particular region. This wouldn't have been, if some of you said to me today, you know what, I took a sell position. This wouldn't have been the most far-fetched thing. I would have said, look, that's aggressive. Why? Because, yes, you have the long-term momentum in your favor. But generally for the week, for the last couple of weeks, price has actually been moving in the opposite direction. So it would be aggressive. But then at the same time, as price comes down to here, this would be the initial move, right? And generally, retail traders, unless you're being extremely aggressive, like I just said, may not get the first move. You're likely going to start getting the second move or the third move, etc., because it's become more clearer. But as price starts to break the bottoms, the lows of the day before, as it comes through and comes back, some people are going to be saying, look, you know what? This was a breakout. Price is just retesting these areas and now moving down. Some people will be jumping in in this particular region. Oh, as price goes down, we're going to be looking for profit taking. What do I always say? You want to look for opposing candles. This is a lot of opposing candles. The only difference here is, and this is also actually quite interesting. You'd say the same thing. Is this the top? But you also have this area here as well, okay, which is during the drop, price consolidated for a little bit before continuing to drop. So this is one piece of insight. This could be potentially two pieces of insight. If it was by itself, maybe not. But because you've got, you've got these two scenarios, this here and this here, that can line up. If this, take this all off just for, let's a bit cleaner. If this area here wasn't there and price just kind of shot down quite quickly and then price came back here, then you wouldn't have that symmetry. All you'd have to say is, like I talked about before, is this the top question mark? And you'd put this on and you'd wait. And full disclosure, you wouldn't get this opportunity unless you were being what? Aggressive, which is what I wouldn't necessarily categorize or classify, adv advise you to do. But in this scenario, as price is right here, right now, it's the same thing. Price to drop lower. Okay, cool. Is this the potential top? We put a question mark on and we ascertain, we wait, we see. Could this be the area where price doesn't want to go any higher. Price may drop and it may not provide an opportunity and you have to be fine and comfortable saying, look, you know what? This is an opportunity that I may not be able to, to acquire. This is why we don't just stick to one currency because sometimes we, we are going to miss current, trades on currencies. Sometimes we are going to lose trades on specific currencies. That's why we don't just have all our eggs in this one specific basket. The, the, um, the basket obviously being um, um, the currency basically, when you think about it like this, okay? So this is the Aussie dollar. This is kind of my view. As price continues to drop, I'll be looking for more and more sell opportunities. But as I, let's look at this. Let's go higher again, right? Just remember this. We do this. You can just do things like this. And you can make these just a different color.
And these can just be things that reference target zones. You can say, look, just so you know, if I'm taking trades down, looking for sell positions, right? I'm going to be mindful of these areas. We have 62.30 pretty much. And we have 61.40. These are two areas we'll be mindful of. And this is just by looking this way and saying, okay, cool. These are previous areas where price has pushed up from, like very significantly. We've also got this area here as well, which is also a key area where price has actually pushed up from. So as we continue to break through areas, that's all we do. We just continue to look this way and say, okay, cool, where's the next area? So if I'm taking any trades, I want my target to be in this region. I want it to be within this region. I want it to be within this region. And when it comes to trading, any trade we take up here, okay, any potential trades we take up here, with our stop losses higher, somewhere up here, for example, this would be the risk, right? This distance. This is the maximum reward. Now, any trade we take may not be all the way down to this area. It may be like here, for example. But either way, the risk to reward, the reward has to be for me at least three times to one. Okay? And if it doesn't meet that criteria, then I won't take the trade. No matter how good it looks, no matter how good the opportunity is. That's just how I trade personally. For those of you, I know some of you, a lot of you are probably into like one to one and stuff like that. Or one to two, so um, two to one risk to reward and stuff like that. It will be like it will be more likely a trade opportunity will can pan out for you in most scenarios because you're going for less target, less profit target. That's the Aussie dollar. Okay, so again, let me see here if there's any questions. There's some questions. Um, um, let's see. Oil oh, push back down. Hey Paul, thanks for coming high. US Tech 100 downtrend continues, big moves at the moment. Oil oh, pushing back down. Yeah, they are. A lot of, um, we don't really focus too much, um, to be honest, on um, crude oil and those kind of things. But this trade strategy that I'm talking about applies across the board or across financial instruments. But yes, there has been a lot of like um, volatile action in a lot of stocks, in a lot of um, um, in index funds, basically, and all these different kind of things. So just handle those things with care. The thing with the thing with the stock market and all these kind of things is they're not as volatile as currencies. But the thing that's different about stocks are they're a lot more erratic. What I mean by that is they they can be a lot more predict unpredictable in regards to just what they do. Okay, and because it closes every day, you can have markets gapping up, gapping down, and it can be a, a bit more dangerous in certain aspects. But yes, there has been a lot of uncertainty and a lot of just. Um, crazy momentum in a lot of these these instruments okay so thanks for those comments let's also see let's look at another currency okay i'll try and get through as much of these currency as possible um before the hours up just so i can give you guys and girls as much value as possible so this is the pound against the dollar this is another interesting one right because we talked about this and you can see some analysis already going back to the weekend again like i said it's in the description box from a couple of days ago how we kind of planned all this stuff out but some of these things have been on from previous live streams as well this is why it's important to go back over our, all of our live streams and get all of this insight because it helps you it builds the case together so going back to a few weeks ago where we kind of pinpointed a good opportunity here which but it was all subsequent it was all um subject to this area right here the 122 20 region and i was basically highlighting and saying look Price has been from higher time frames similar to what the Aussie looks like moving down. But I was basically saying on this particular currency, if this market's gonna go down, it needs to break this to conclusively tell me that the market's moving down. And at the time, price was in this kind of region, right? So price basically had bounced off this area and then subsequently did a very good up trade opportunity, 120 pips. I think was the whole window provided a really good opportunity but at the same time i was saying look it has to break this region and look what it did it didn't subsequently break this region and pushed off and as that happened um i'm sure many of you were looking to trade buy opportunities and i was just basically saying the same thing i've just explained on the aussie okay look to the left and see areas where price would actually turn around now price didn't turn around in this particular area price continued to move up and just like i explained on the aussie as price is doing that there's no there's no real harm in basically trading in that direction if you're just looking for trade opportunities. 
But again, like I explained on Aussie dollar, you have to be prepared and understand that, look, the market can start turning and going with the long-term momentum anytime it wants. And this is what it's, it's, it's perceived to have done here in this particular region, okay, at the 126.50 region. Price came back into this key area of selling previously. If you look back from the higher time frames, we'll show you that in a moment. And prices now subsequently started to push down. Now, prices hit this area, which is what I think I put on the weekend. And I was basically saying, look, these areas need to get taken out now. We've got this area down here, but this has now come in as well as an area where price needs to break below. So just like the Aussie, look how similar they are. This one is actually broken through now. Excuse me. Now, we're back. We're at 122.90, right? We're 70 pips away from this region right here. And as with trading analysis, all we have to do here is just move it over. Okay? Because now in real time, it still hasn't been broken. And similar to the Aussie. Let's just go up quickly before we go down so you can see this, right? You can see what this looks like. If you go back about a couple of weeks ago to the video we did on our channel, the 800 pip drop, this is what we were talking about on the pound against the dollar, 800 pip drop potential. This potential is actually quite exciting because if price gets back all the way down to these levels, there's X amount of opportunities that could potentially arise. Because price generally isn't just going to do this in 20 minutes, okay? It may do this over a couple of days. It may do this over a couple of weeks, as you can see right here. This is from the 16th of April, of March, so it reached here, basically. And subsequently, going back to a few days ago, okay, where price basically got back to this area. So you're talking about a couple of weeks price could actually be doing this. And that's it, a couple of weeks of potential trade opportunities throughout the week, day after day after day to sell basically and basically make some profitable opportunities but again just like it was a couple of weeks ago this is all contingent on this area breaking okay so i don't mind if you've already been looking for sell positions i'm looking for more sell positions and this will all be um, predicated on what happens here but again we went up to go down this is the key area of huge buying activity where price could decide to return to bounce off of why because it's done it previously but also what it's doing right here right and this is just below the 115 area so we're talking about 600 700 pips potential right but let's go up so i can show you this okay let's zoom out a little bit so you can see the red area right but let's even look at the 30 minutes give you a better view of this and let me zoom in right so we know this here is the 122 region i mentioned this previously where price is right now is about what 60 70 pips away okay if price is 60 70 pips away any trade that we potentially take in this kind of region has to have a risk that the reward can ultimately potentially be within this region because price can likely get into here but is price going to break below here at once the reason i say this is not because i don't believe ultimately if the price is moving down it will break through this region the reason i say this is because if i'm trading i'm coming to the market looking to try and make money every day okay with a trade opportunity so if i now start putting my target below this video below this area then that means likely that it may take more than one day to actually break through the area we did a video about this about a free tool you can use it's not in the description box but it's just a couple of videos back on our channel go back and watch it after this live stream it will show you how you can use this tool to help you make trade decisions as well as like in addition to what I've kind of explained in regards to looking to the left in regards to where price is actually bouncing from, it will help you a lot. Okay? And if there's any mods here in the chat, maybe one of them will get the link for you so you can have it at ease okay, after the live stream. But the fact of the matter is, these are the, this is how we basically unpack it. We're looking for these kind of opportunities in these particular regions. Let's go to a five minute view and you can see 
more so exactly how what we talked about on Aussie dollar as as in regards to price breaking through the area right price breaks through an area that we've ascertained in 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 advance previously we don't know this for a fact but this is just based on what our unemotional logical analysis has um, decided for us produced for us and price came back in so some people say well it's maybe a false break some people say well it's just retesting this area and provides this opportunity now if you notice back to the aussie dollar opportunity this area previously was synonymous here it's a bit higher okay and price obviously since then pushed lower than this particular region so we'd be saying to ourselves look okay this is 123.40 right this area right here just below it and we'd say okay cool is this the top okay and if price comes back into this region, right, and provides something worthwhile, in my opinion, me taking a potential trade in this kind of re a re a region, arena, isn't the most far-fetched thing. And I'd be looking to try and trade it to lower levels. And what I'd basically do is, I'd be asking myself, is this the top, right, like I just said? And I'd say, okay, cool. I'd say if price gets to this area, potential, right? So we make it yellow. That's how I do it. Let's lower the transparency a little bit. Okay. Let's send it to the back. And you can get a free trial to this software i use as well it's in the description it's called trading view just for the record and i'd be saying okay cool okay what we're dealing here with is what we're dealing with about a 15 pip 20 pip region and i'd be looking at this just asking myself okay cool is price going to get back into this region we don't know but if price comes back into this region for me and I see stuff that I like, I wouldn't mind trying to trade lower. Now, we've talked about areas already. We talked about the 122, 20 region. We've talked about how it's 70 pips away, right? So any trade opportunity I take up here needs to be within risk to award of 70 pips on the regards to the target. Now, this is a 20 pip window. But let's say, for example, I took a trade from this area here at the bottom and my stop loss is above that would be about 20 pips so in order to get three to one that would be a 60 pip profit target at least is what i need so the, the area obviously provides 70 so we're, we're good in that regard right but then it will just come down to the entry this is how we're looking at a five minute chart here right and this is how we talk about lower time frames and all of these different kind of things because we want to see in more detail what all of this stuff looks like because we want to take 20 pips and we want to minimize it as much as possible what do you mean by that israel why would you do that because when it comes to trade opportunities right like i've already mentioned if this is a potential 20 pip region together right it's 18 pips what it says here this is an 18 pip region that means we talked about 70 right but if you see this number here you see it's changing you see this number right here is changing and we want that to get to at least three three to one risk to reward but the point is as we look at this stuff i've talked about this previously as well if we can shrink this if we can get a better entry the risk to reward gets bigger and bigger and bigger even without going for a bigger and bigger target so we want to always try and get the best entry possible and if it pans out it pans out if it doesn't pan out it doesn't pan out but this is why we put risk together with reward and we put like 
common sense into this because we want to make sure. And again, price could break through this region. It could do it straight away. In that regard, it will just nullify the opportunity. Price could come into this region, right? Look like it's going to go down. We take a sell position, thinking it's going to go down. And price just do the complete opposite and stop you out. And if that happens, that's fine. You have to be willing to take a loss in order to potentially get reward at these lower levels. Okay? Because if this is 123.20, and down here we're at 120.260, 122.70, this is 50 pips. So even if we can get a trade on in this area at 15, we can, comp we can compress the 20 pip window to about 15 or less. All we need now is 45 pips. But remember down here, 122.20 is about 70 pips away. So we could potentially have one trade done and dusted. And why would we want to get 45? Because just look to the left. Because of this. Two times price bottomed in this region. But if price is going to come back down here, not to say it can't get lower, but you want to take into action, into mindset, the previous price action, right? So think about it from that perspective. Now if price it panned out and it's panned out, cool. We'd get our take profit and if price decides to drop down lower to 122.20, fine. But if it doesn't, if it pushes back, that might provide another opportunity to potentially take another trade down to this region. This is all stuff that we do in advance. Notice that price isn't in this region right now. And I'm saying, okay, cool. How can I trade this? Why? Because that's very emotional. I can say, okay, cool. Logically, a trade from this region might actually make sense. We don't just trade the, religi the, the region religiously. We don't just trade it bi blindly. Yet we know what, as soon as it gets here, I'm basically selling. No, we actually want to see what the price is actually doing in this region. So just bear that in mind, okay? But up here, nothing's happening up here right now. But I'm making a potential decision in advance, just like we did two days ago. Again, it's in the description box. You watch it after the live stream because it's unemotional. Right now, emotions aren't raise, like racing in my heart and in my mind saying, look, yeah, you need to make a trade decision right now. No. But when price gets here, I'd already done all this analysis and made a decision already. Okay, Cautious of this area right here and just waiting to see as well what happens. So just bear that in mind. That's the, that's the pound against the dollar. Okay, let's see. Uh, what else do we have? We've got, let's see, we've got a lot of comments here now. Let's see. Paul says, but at the moment, the market is on the retail trader side, very predictable. Yes, to a certain degree. Um, you never know. Like, it, in, a, in some ways, like when it comes to, I agree with you in a sense that when it comes to, like, major global crisis, those kind of scenarios, a lot of the time it is a lot easier because it's very predictable what's going to happen. Yes, a lot of the time the markets are going to sell off, which provides an opportunity for people to have one less thing against them. But the nuance and the, the, it becomes a lot harder when you're actually coming to trading it specifically. Okay, so let's see. Tell him to trade the original Monday. Tell him to trade on a live account and show activity statements. Okay, interesting. Um, luckily, he was already in oil. He's currently, six hundred fifty points up. Congratulations. Um, original Monday. Okay, interesting. The, the the funny thing about this, in regards to what this person's actually saying here, is what am I doing right now? This is actually funny. Um, he's saying, he's saying, look, I'm all talk. I'm interested in selling stuff. Like, I unashamedly sell stuff. Why? Because I give, get people results. But more so to the point, right? What am I doing right now? Not to spend too much time on, on this person, right? But think about this. Right now, I'm actually giving people insights. I'm giving people my thoughts on the market. This doesn't cost anything. This is free. Okay? Logic shows you that this is free. And on top of that, 
you can go away and follow or not follow what I said. Worst case scenario, you can see what I said. So if the market does exactly what I say and I've given you that for free, then how does that relate into me selling anything? It doesn't. You can take that information, do what you want with it. You can ignore it and you can make comments and say, oh, X, Y, Z and attack my character and all these different kind of things. But that doesn't change the fact that when I'm going live for free and giving all this information, people can use it and get results. Look at over, over my previous live stream videos and see what I analyzed and see what happened. Okay. That's for all people to see. Okay. So it's interesting that you're saying that. Um, none of these people trade live on regulated brokers. We are paying 10,000 for any Forex trader to show their back to back profitable quarters. Guess what? This campaign been asked to do. I don't even know who you are, to be honest. So I haven't heard that. Um, let's see. The live stream, not live accounts. So I didn't say this was a, a live account. I said, I'm giving advice. Follow the advice I'm looking at and see what actually happens. Okay which is actually quite interesting. Now, I don't mind you disagreeing, but if you keep like saying the same stuff over and over again, um, you get put in time out. Okay? So you'll still be able to watch. I have no problem with that. But if you're just going to keep posting the same stuff, obviously then you're going to get put in time out. Um, but again, we don't have no problem. I don't have any problem personally anyway, with people dissenting. But again, I think it's quite clear to see you can look at what I'm saying and see how it actually lines up. Um, and I'm not saying stuff after the fact. A lot of the time I'm talking about things in real time or even before, like I've just explained. That's the whole ethos of actually my trading style. So just for the record. Um, let's see. Let's look at the euro. We've got about 10, 15, 20 minutes left before the hour's up. Um, so let me try and get some more charts analyzed. Um, let's see. So let's look at the higher view. We talked about this one a couple of days ago. Same kind of thing. We talked about the market potentially moving down, right? But again, you can see this area on here. This is all predicated on if market the market's going to move down, it needs to break this region, the 108 region, in order for it to have a, a likely opportunity to try and get back down to these lower levels. Okay. So the fact of the matter is, as we do all of this stuff, we have to be prepared for all of these scenarios. And it's interesting when you look at this time frame right here, the four hour, right? This gives you a nice viewpoint of what price is actually be doing. Because yes, we highlighted this area here just below 108. But notice, we've got one, two, three times, right? That price so far is showing that it doesn't want to go down there. So similar to like what we talked about on the pound against the dollar previously, we had a similar kind of area on that we wanted price to actually break through if price was going to continue to try and show us that look, price is actually going to move down, but it hasn't done that. So as it continues to move up, because I said this on the weekend, I believe that look, if price doesn't try and break these areas, then price may be suggesting to us that look, it isn't ready to try and test those lower levels yet. It's going to continue to try and move up. And I can't remember specifically if I mentioned this on the live stream, but let me zoom out just a little bit so you can get a better view of this. It may have been on this currency or another currency, which was similar. You can see that this is the area we've had on where we expected price to potentially drop down to. But look, price is putting in what we'd classify as higher lows. Okay. So if price is going to try and test these areas again, you would expect, because if you think about all of this activity right here, right, in the bigger scheme of things, this is just sideways action. So if price has pushed up from this area, which isn't a surprise if you're doing the kind of things we've talked about, especially on the weekend, and price is pushing back down to these areas and not trying to get any lower than this area, it wouldn't be a surprise if price tries to continue to move up to these levels and doesn't try to come back down to these areas right here. Okay. So that's important. And this is why we say it over and over again. It's important for you to understand and to do these things in advance. Because when this stuff's happening in real time, there's a lot of emotion on the table. 
there's a lot of should I do this should I not do this should I do this should I not do this and while this is actually happening it causes potential issues this is how people get caught in the whole mindset of over trading okay trading and they get into revenge trading because they're caught up in the moment and they find themselves taking so many trades more so than what they should have actually been taking when they shouldn't actually be doing that okay so in regards to this it's the same kind of thing this is just a closer view of what we just talked about this is a one hour view and you can see price isn't trying to break this area right here and if price isn't going to break this region then unless price is going to continue moving sideways over on the bigger scheme of things the momentum is still going this way so if you're going to be looking for long positions that's something to do and to consider okay um let me jump to another currency just to touch more currencies for time up let's look at the euro jpy which is another one of interest as well similar this is the one hour view let's look higher for example just to get a better view here um let's see this one yeah yeah thanks jim i uh yeah i pretty much assume he's a troll you know you get people that are negative and i like i said I have no issue with people having a dissenting view. It's very simple. Um, but it's interesting when you get these people that try and basically say that, look, you don't do this, so therefore this. And like, who are you to say that? Okay, um, You're no one in the bigger scheme of things. Your word has no more weight than what my word has. So in that regard, people are left to decide for themselves how they're going to basically handle what, what anyone says. And like I said, um, I do live streams for free. I give you people advice for free in these scenarios. You can do what you want with it. If you do it and you make money with it, then people will come out and say, look, yeah, I've, I used what he said and I made money, etc." And it's just, it's just that simple. Okay? Um, Euro, yen, four hour. You can see, similar to some of the other currencies, but look, we've had these lines on over and over again. We talked about the 117. When price was in these higher regions, we were talking about how price would go down price would test these areas and you have to be cautious in these areas and look like this is why it's actually funny today these comments are coming because you can actually go back over the last couple of weeks of live streams and see what i actually said and see how price actually reacted in these areas okay which is actually funny and if you can do all of this stuff in advance in regards to analysis it makes it so much more easier to actually make profits from it because it's not like we're talking about this stuff after the fact but I mentioned in regards to this anyway, once price was here, what's price going to do? Is it going to move sideways? Is it going to continue down or is it going to go the other way? And I said, it makes more sense based on what price has done previously, going back years, multiple years, that price would actually either move sideways or bounce off. Price bounced off, came back into this region and tried to test this area again. Now it's the same thing, the same scenario. What have we seen? I said this on the weekend. Okay. Price can do anything at these regions, but if price basically is going to move down, okay, what did I say? You have to be mindful of this region right here, the 116.20 region. What did price do since opening up? It moved up a little bit and then subsequently started moving down. Where did it not break? Surprise, surprise, it did not break this particular region here, okay? This is all stuff you can ascertain and plan out in advance okay this isn't rocket science <laughs> this doesn't even have to be too advanced all you have to do is do a little bit of work before the market opens and all you also have to do is be disciplined okay two things but notice price didn't even get all of the way and i said look if price is going to move down there's no problem in trying to take sell positions but just be mindful of this and this is a prime example of why if you are going to take a trade, I mentioned this even earlier in this live stream and I mentioned it for weeks and weeks and weeks since we've been doing these live streams more and more. You want to put your target just above these areas. Why? Because any trades you're taking down to these regions or up to these regions, it's not a guarantee they're going to get there. You want to put things in your favor as much as possible. So now as we look at this euro yen, where is it? Price has pushed back up to the 117 region, right? And it's basically trying to test this area again. So what is it going to do? 
Well, first and foremost, it's broke through this region, okay, the 117, which is a, a good sign for the sellers. But what also do we have? Let's go lower. Let's look at a 15 or a 30 minute and look at this in more detail and see specifically what's actually happening here, all right? Because at some point we have to ascertain, okay, what are we going to what are we going to do with this scenario? So price is back in this particular area here, right at 117, and we saw this a couple of times on some of the other currencies. Price would actually break through and kind of try and retest. It doesn't mean it's always a guarantee that price is actually going to follow through, although the long term momentum is with us on our favour. Bear in mind, we are currently right now at these areas, okay, 117, 116, 20 where price has pushed back from previously. So you have to take that into consideration. But all it is, is a question, okay? Is this the potential top? Okay? And all you do is wait. You just say, look, if price is going to come back, this is about 117.15, right? Where price is right now is 116.88. So about 20, 30 pips away. If price comes back into this region, all we have to do is ask ourselves a question. Is it providing enough insight for me to say, you know what, let me try and now sell back to lower levels. Notice that price dropped this time to 116.40, 116.30. Again, this is going to be the huge historical area. This is where price actually recently didn't go below. So I'd want a trade target to go in higher than this. I'm not saying it has to go right here. If the risk reward makes sense to put the target here, then maybe I'll do that. If it makes sense, excuse me, to go here, I'll do that as well. It all depends on the different scenarios. But this is why we do these things in advance. Just like we kind of explained on the euro, the pound, the dollar, the Aussie dollar, we look at all these different currencies in advance. Why? Because we don't know what's going to happen, but we are trying to make smart decisions. Okay. But then at the same time, what happens if price comes up right but bear in mind these areas remember the 11620 region is right here these areas below are where price has pushed up from before so you have to take that into consideration and say well is price really going to continue to push down and go lower or is price most likely going to Push higher, right? Which is what price has done subsequently, subsequent time previously. Now, what is the worst case scenario? What can what's the worst that can happen in this scenario? So let's say, for example, price comes up to here, like we kind of explained on some of the other currencies. You take a trade put on this position, your stop loss is below whatever, and your target is somewhere down here. Okay, within whatever risk to reward profile you you follow. Price doesn't do what you want, and price goes against you. This is where Minimal risk comes into play. You want to risk small amounts of your trading account. You don't want to put a lot of money on the line. Because if you put a lot of money on the line, this is now how people lose big. This is how people now start trying to revenge the trade. They basically start trying to fight against the market because they're emotionally compromised because they put too much risk on the table. You have to be nimble. You have to say to yourself, okay, cool. If I get this wrong, then this is the historical area. Although the long-term momentum is down, this is the area where price has actually pushed that off from and reversed in previous times. So cool. As this continues to break, maybe you say, okay, you know what? Maybe I got this wrong. Maybe the move has finished. It's exceeded. It's all the way far spent. Is price now going to do that? Why do I say that? Because when you look at the four hour, well, this is what we started on, right? can see here let me zoom out that going back you see this here right going back to February what has price been doing price has been topping out in this particular region and price has been bottoming out in this particular region So again, this doesn't guarantee anything. But if we're smart enough to say, okay, cool, the price has previously dropped from these areas in April, 
this was the bottom. Are you going to tell me that this is coincidence now again? That price dropped to this area and is now trying to bounce off. This is why it's always funny to me when you hear a lot of naysayers in regards to trading. Because it's like, the things that some of us are talking about actually makes quite a lot of sense. And it's actually visible to see. Even a beginner can see these kind of things. A beginner or someone who doesn't make money doesn't make money not because they can't see the opportunities. A lot of the time it's because they lack the discipline and they won't follow through with a strategy that actually makes sense. Okay? Anyone, you could even take a young child and say, okay, look, where on this on the screen has price not gone below? And they'll start to show you, look, you know what, right here, this is where price continues not to go below. So if you know that the likelihood is that price hasn't gone below these regions, what is most likely to happen? Well, the last time price was in this region, where did it go to? It went to here, before at least coming back. And then what happened? Where did it go to the next time? It went to here. But oh, look, it came to here, which is synonymous with this area right here. But where did it go to? It also went back to where it came from. And then it came back again. And where did it drop? Where did it rise to again? Oh, look, it also went here again. It also went to the top. Now, when price got up to this region, where did it go to? We talked about this as this was happening. Surprise, surprise, it went all the way back down to where? To where it came from. Price came back up. Where did it go to again? All the way back down to where it came from previously. This is not rocket science. Okay? This is simple. This isn't because you can't understand this. This is because, in most case scenarios, discipline, risking too much, taking too many trades, revenge trading, listening to silly people's advice, all of this different kind of stuff. The day I, I say something that doesn't make sense logically, then I may start listening to people that are gonna, going to accuse me of saying, I don't know what I'm talking about, or I'm not trading, and all these different things, etc. Okay? So we've looked at the euro. Let me look at the USD JPY quickly. Um, let's see. Okay, now this is another interesting one. I've, I've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks about how it's just basically been all over the place. We initially were talking about expecting this price to try and retest these levels. It hasn't done so yet. I believe I mentioned on the weekend that what price has been showing us is that this 17 region, right? is where price is trying to form a bottom, it seems. And if that's going to be the precursor to price now trying to attempt to hit these levels higher again, then that may be a good sign. Okay? And for those of us that are looking for buying opportunities on this, um, they might come into actually fruition. As we zoom out, I mentioned the 17, right? You can see it here in a little bit more detail what price has actually been doing in these regions. This is 17 here. And you can see over the last couple of days, the last but the bottom over the last couple of days is right actually here. Um, okay, so that's so that's another that's another currency. But this is on the back burner, not one of the main things I'm looking at. Until it's as puts in a bit more work on the upside, if that's what it's going to do, then I'll actually take that into more consideration. But that's my view on most of these currencies. Let's see here. So yeah, we've been going for about an hour. So I guess on that note, just to keep to time today, um, I thank everyone for tuning in. Thanks for the comments, positive and negative. Okay. Um, thanks for interaction. And I'll see you most likely in two days, God willing, with another live stream, basically breaking down what the markets are actually doing, what my feats are for the rest of the week, etc. If you've got any comments, you can actually put them in the chat now or you can put them in the sorry you can put them in the comment section below the video and maybe i'll do a dedicated video for that or i'll maybe address those in a future live stream thanks for tuning in thanks and take care and i'll see you on the next one